Hi, my name is Brennan Anderson, and I'm the senior audio producer at Pyramind Studios. This video series is going to cover a range of programming topics that you'll need to know if you're going to be involved in any audio implementation or engine programming. First, we're going to take a look inside Unity and see what it takes to play sounds within the engine. So first, we're going to look at this scene which I've set up. You can download the scene from the Unity Asset Store, but I've made changes to it uh, to show off various techniques. First, let's walk around the level. So, you're basically in this courtyard with some water, a pyramid, and these three orbs. If you go up to the orbs and press E, then they actually turn on. That's going to be a big feature that we're going to use to attach sounds to later on. So, the first thing we want to do is figure out how to basically just play a sound without any extra features, just play the sound in the game. So what we want to do is first we need to make an audio manager script and that's going to handle all of the functionality of how we're playing the sound, whether we're going to stop the sound, if we want to fade the sound in and out, um, and any other thing that you want to do with the sound, you're going to need a manager script to be able to handle that. So let's open up the audio manager. If you look under the hierarchy, and then click on the audio manager object and double click on the script it'll open up the script in whatever your uh, IDE is for me I'm using Visual Studio 2013 so this is the basic script that I've already set up to create a, a singleton a singleton makes sure that there's only one of that script in the scene um, you don't need to worry about this right now, but it's something that's useful later on. And you can take a look at the code here to see how to make something a singleton. First, we're going to create a public method called play sound PeerMind. This is going to let us do various things to the audio later on. But first, let's set it up. Public void play sound PeerMind. It's going to take two arguments. The first argument is going to be an audio clip called clip. The second is a game object called object to play on. This is going to allow us to do 3D positioning with our audio because when you play an audio source, if you know what object it will play on, it will then attach itself to that and play in 3D space. So now the guts of this method, or the code block, is fairly simple. We're going to keep it as simple as we can right now. We're going to do audio source dot play clip a point, shows up right there. And it takes two arguments, and those arguments happen to be the same arguments that we gave our method up above. And that's going to be the clip, which we named clip and the transform position of, it's a vector three, of the object that we want to play the sound on. So we're going to call uh, object to play on dot transform dot position. And that way, when we pass this information in, it will play the audio clip in the correct point in space. So. Now, how do we actually use this and make it play? So if we go back into Unity and click on these spheres, we'll go to the scene view, and we can click on a sphere, and you'll see they come up right here, the orange, blue, and purple ones. Uh, if we click on any of them and open up the script called Lightbulb, then this is what the this is the gameplay script that is driving that game object. So we have a couple things to look at right off the bat. First, if we look in the update loop, you can see there are a bunch of if statements, and those are just describing what happens So uh, when certain things in the game happen. First is asking if we are in range of the light. Uh, there are colliders surrounding the light that are detecting whether your character is close to, enough to the light to interact with it. Then it's asking if we're pressing down the E key once we're in range. And if we are, we're going to turn the light on. And if we're not, um, then it's not going to do anything. Uh, but 
you can see in this logic it's also checking to see if the light is on or not. If the light is on, it's going to turn the light off. If the light's not on, it will turn the light on. So these are calling methods called turn light off and turn light on. And that's what we're going to be using for the most part in this tutorial. So if you go to turn light on, you can see it has a couple things in there. That's just changing the materials and different things about the game object to make it look different when you turn it on. It's also keeping track of how many lights are turned on. Uh, we're going to be using that later on. Now what we want to do is use these methods to call our custom method to play a sound when we turn the light on. So underneath all of this code block, we're just going to make a new line and we're going to call audio manager dot instance. Now there's an instance because it's a singleton. Dot play sound peer mind shows up right there. And then we're going to pass it the arguments that it needs. So the first argument it needs is the clip and the second is the game object. Well, up top we have several public fields for audio clips. There's a field for turn on clip, turn off clip, all on clip, and light hum clip. Right now we're just worried about the turn on clip. So if we go down, we know because of the field at the top what the clip's name is, uh, or at least the, the name within this script. It's called turn on clip. So that's our audio clip. Now the game object that we want to play on, that's simple. It's just this game object. So all we have to write is game object. And we're done. So save that, go back into Unity, and when we play, we should hear a sound when we turn the light on. Oops, no, we didn't hear a sound. So one of the things you have to keep in mind is you do have to assign audio clips to the game objects to be able to hear the sound. So if we go and look at the audio folder, we're going to SFX, and there are different sounds. Um, uh, so let's just listen to a few of them, see what we like when they turn on. I like this one. So if we go and we can actually select all of the orbs because we want it to do, on, do it for each one. We don't want them all to have different sounds. You can have them have different sounds, but for now we're going to make them all the same. So we're going to grab this subtle confirm simple 18 and drag it on to turn on clip. Now, when we run the game, we should be able to hear it. There we go. So now we're playing a simple sound. So now we can do pretty much the same thing for turning off the clip. Uh, you can just select all of them and drag one of the sounds on. I'm going to preview this one. I like that one. So, so close three. We select all of the spheres and we drag subtle close three onto turn off clip. Now I have to go back into the script and put the same call to our method in the turn off method. Except I just copy and paste it here. Uh, it still has turn on clip, so we need to change that to turn off clip. Now, go back into Unity and there you go, on and off. Great. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest PureMind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at PureMind.com.